This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Well, there are seven things that we're taught in this passage of Scripture that we need to do. Seven things, and we're going to go through these fairly quickly. The first thing is, in verse 1, get ready to move into where God wants you. Now, you don't know where it is that God, you know maybe a little bit about it. They knew a little bit about it, the, the fact that they were supposed to go across the river and they were going into cave, but they didn't know anything about it other than what some spies had told them. They really didn't comprehend it, and neither do you. You don't, all you know is that you got a river to cross, but you don't really understand what's on the other side. But you need to get to that point where you're ready to move. Ready to move. Ready to move to where God wants you. That's the first step. To be able to say, God, I really am ready. If this is what you want, I really am ready. The second thing is in verses 2 and 3. Stay within the presence of God. Now notice what he told them. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Now the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. That was where God spoke to them from, from the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was the Holy of Holies. It was the presence of God. And the principle here is that you are to stay within the presence of God. One of the biggest problems that happens for us is that we decide we're going to do something and then we just go off and do it. We miss this idea of God's will done, God's way never likes for God's provision. And we just go out and do it ourselves. And we get out of the presence of God and that gets us into trouble. But we are to stay within the presence of God. Stay there where God is. Wherever God is, that, make that decision and that choice in your life. God, wherever you are, that's where I'm going to stay. Reveal yourself so that I'll know where you are, so that I'll see you in my life. I'll have a sense of your direction. I'll know that you are there. God, I want to be where you are. Stay within the presence of God. Number three, determine to do things God's way. Determine. I'm just, whatever it is, I'm going to do it God's way. And if it doesn't work, uh, then God gets the credit. And if it does work, then God gets the credit. Verse 4, then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. Listen, God is going to take you places you've never been before. That's what He wants to do in your life. He's not just wanting to repeat your life over and over and over again until you get it right. He's wanting to take you places you've never been before. He's wanting to do things in your life that He's never done done before in your life. God wants to take you someplace you've never been before. And at the end of your life, you'll be able to say, wow, this was a hundred times greater than I expected it to be. And God says, I'm guaranteeing that's going to happen. Determine that you're going to do things God's way. Then in verse 5, which is point number 4, commit yourself to God's way. Now you've determined that you're going to do things God's way. But once you know what it is that God wants to do, commit yourself to it. God, I know this is what you want, and I am doing it. I commit myself to God's way. Verse 4 says, then you will know which way to go, but keep a distance of about a thousand yards between the ark. Don't go near it. God gave them very specific instructions. Let God give you very specific instructions and commit your way to doing it. And trust me, he has given you very specific instructions in his word. You can start there. Start with being obedient and faithful to what the Word of God says. And when God says, I've given you this instruction and I'm going to take you places you've never been before if you'll just do it my way. And so you have to come to that point where you're ready to move where God wants you and you stay within the presence of God and you're determined to do God's, uh, things God's way and you have committed yourself to doing it God's way because God's will done God's way never lacks for God's provision. And you make that choice, and you make that decision, and now you're committed. And then I want you to see what happens in verses 6 through 13. You recognize that God's ways are very different from the world's way. The things that God's going to do and He's going to ask you to do are very different from what the world does and the way the world does things. 
Very, very different. And God's going to do something in your life and through your life and for your life and because of your life that's very different from what you expect. And if it's different from you, what you expect, you can bet it's different from what the world expects. And then verse 14, you decide. Obey God. We said, yeah, but I'm already committed. I'm, I'm already determined I'm going to do it. Okay, then follow through. Obey. Just obey God. Verse 14 says it this way. So when the people broke camp to cross Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them just like they had been told to do. They obeyed God. They didn't get into this thing and say, you know what, it makes a little bit more sense. You know, maybe we just kind of formed, you know, like instead of following the line, maybe if we all went together and kind of moved up, you know, and then, you know, we then we can build a platoon or a pontoon. And then we'll, you know, we start rethinking this. And God says, I got a plan. I know what I'm going to do. You just do it the way I tell you to do it. Don't try to second guess me. Don't try to out guess me. Certainly don't try to outthink me. God knows what he's up to. It's your job just to obey him. Which brings us to the seventh point, which is verses 15 through 17. Expect God to do what he says he will do. Expect God to do what he says he will do. You know, one of the biggest problems that we have in our Christian walk is that we don't expect God to do what he says he's going to do. Think about it. Do you really, really expect that God's going to do what he said he's going to do in your life? What he says in his word, what he promises in his word, what he says he wants to do in your life, do you really, really expect God's going to do that? Most Christians, if they get honest about it, have to say, I guess I don't. I was in a meeting earlier this week. I was sharing this with, with, uh, with Mike earlier, uh, uh, Mike Gisham, and we were talking about this, this very thing. And the question was asked innocently in this meeting. It wasn't, there, was an agenda to, there wasn't an agenda to the question. But the question was asked, you know, on Sunday morning, when you get up and you're ready for church, what excites you about getting to church? And what doesn't excite you? And why? What excites you about going to church? And what doesn't excite you? And then why? And it was interesting to hear the answers as people went around and just got really, really honest, really transparent about it. And you know what I began to notice in all of the answers? Nobody said, I expect God to do something. Nobody said well, I look forward to the class, and I look forward, you know, to be, see my friends, and I look forward to some great music and some good teaching, and, you know, and I look forward to that. I'm excited about that, and that, 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 that. And not one person said, I expect God to show up. Do you expect God to do what he says he will do? You want to move your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Then you need to let God lead you to bigger thoughts, bigger dreams, bigger plans. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 says it this way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, higher, bigger than your thoughts. Your God thinks big. And he wants to implement those big thoughts and those big plans in your life. He wants to accomplish that in your life. He didn't just have those thoughts and then create you and then not expect anything to happen with those thoughts and those plans. He didn't create the stars and the universe and the worlds. He didn't create the solar system for it just to be there. He has perfect plans. He has something that he wants to accomplish. And it includes you. His ways, his thoughts are bigger than yours. It's time we need to get in on what God's planning and what God's thinking. And expect God to do 